Hi, I'm Elena. Um, I'm here at the 5050 Arts Collective on Douglas Street in Victoria. And um, yeah, this is a part of my show um, called Why Do I Love the Water, which I did in collaboration with the Bonnie Mac Macomb Cry Residency, um, which I attended in the spring. So this piece, um, the paintings anyway, I did at the residency in March, and it was my first month I spent the whole month painting these um, and just taking a lot of time and thinking about stuff. And I actually had never made a painting before, um, before then, and they had some paint. And so it was really meditative, and it became something that I, I became really attached to at the end. Um, I see it as water, like we put it on the floor as water and I love the way it moves as you move towards it um, because of all the dots there's like a little bit of an optical illusion um, effect I guess and yeah I just I, I love water for the space that it gives like it it can hold you up like it supports you but it's also so powerful like it holds so much within it other than us so like if for me it's like a space that yeah, that provides me space um, to relax, but also to think and have quiet um, and a bit of reflecting. So yeah, um, and this one on the side, I actually made a long time ago and I didn't realize how much it fit into the show until like the week before. Um, this is called a hanten and it's a Japanese work coat. So it has short sleeves so that your hands are free and it's warm. Um, and this is a child's one, and I screen printed on the inside during my undergrad, a little house. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm part Japanese, so Japanese imagery and learning about Japan has been a big part of my art practice for the last like four years now. And um, yeah, connecting to the clothing and the textile history of Japan has been really great to meld with the rest of my work. Um, this is another hanten actually that I um, pieced together from recycled kimonos that I had dyed. So each little square, like I cut them all up and sewed them all back together, which is a pretty meditative process in and of itself. Um, and then this one on the bottom is a log cabin quilt block that I made with hand dyed materials as well. And I kind of changed it. It used to be a long, skinny, 12 foot long sculpture. But for this piece, I, I changed the format of it and put a sleeping bag inside of it um, for the stuffing and was thinking about weight um, and weighted blankets and like self-soothing and sleep. Um, so it all kind of fit together. So, Today, um, I was going to make a little pillow for one of these objects here. Because in my show, I have a bunch of pillows um, that I wanted to make for some rocks um, as kind of a caretaking action and just like a nice, like soft gesture. Um, so here are some objects that I brought from home. It's like small TV. I don't know where it came from. It's been around for a while. I have this little chest, which I actually have zero clue where I got this, but I can't remember not having it. And inside always lives like a little shark's tooth. Don't know where that came from either, but I've never lost it. Um, this is a newer addition. It's my seed bird. It's very important. It's a bird made out of two seeds, which I bought in Japan. Um, and a rock for good measure. So to make a pillow, basically, you just need anything to stuff it. This is part of a mattress protector, which I just cut up and recycled because it was going to get thrown away. So I like to recycle things as much as possible. Um, and this is some fabric that I dyed a long time ago, which I just made into a little square pillow. You could also use something that's been quilted, like quilt piece. I have like an example here of some quilt piecing that I've done. Um, or you could use some old clothes or whatever you want, really. So to stuff this, I'm just going to roll it up. I 
get it into all the corners as much as possible. And then the most difficult part, like you can sew up the sides any way you want, obviously. Um, I did it on machine, but you could do it by hand too. This is the most difficult part, I guess, is sewing an invisible seam on the, on the edge there. So, <laughs> so I'll just cut some thread. And you want to tuck the needle underneath. Nope, tie a bigger knot, I guess. Okay. So you put the needle in like that, like right beside it, but on the other side of the seam. And then you poke it back out, I don't know, a millimeter later. And then you do the same thing, the other side. And this is just, and it's just gonna disappear a little bit magically. Okay, and so when you're at the end, just throw a little stitch in there, wrap the, the thread around the needle and pull it through, and that'll make a little knot. And then you just wanna bury it. Poke it in and then take it out wherever and cut it, and that'll bury your thread. So now you have a pillowcase that's covered and closed. And for me, the most enchanting part of these pillows is um, where they have little dips in them. I think it's called couching, like in a couch, sometimes they'll have these like buttons in it, you know, and there's like these curves that are made because of that. So I always tie my quilts or my quilted sculptures off with these kinds of couching stitches. So I have some contrasting thread for that. And this is super easy. You could do it on the machine, like a traditional quilt, or you could do it in a pattern. I usually just make little dots. So you just poke through. And you have both sides on the same. <laughs> and when an ambulance is going by. So when you have both sides of the thread on the same side, you tie a knot. Just like pull it tight, tie a little knot. Tie it a few times. and then trim it. So there you go. So now you just have to decide who gets to, to lay on the pillow, I guess. You have a little rock pillow or, or a combination, make a little scene. Yep, that's basically it. <laughs> the 
is a small piece that's just called My Life in Rocks. <laughs> I've been collecting rocks for a long time, and I, yeah, I probably will forever, I guess. So they start from when I was really little, and I remember buying this one at um, a little, sh like a little hippie shop where my grandparents used to live. And this one is, um, it's not technically a rock, but I picked it up off the ground at the driving, the place where my dad learned to drive in Malaysia. Um, this is a little volcanic rock from Jeju Island in Korea, um, where I visited there in 2018. Um, the one on the far end here, I got more recently in, on Galliano Island when I was visiting there. And the last one is attached to um, my air mattress, which was another piece that I made during my residency. It was the second month. I spent the second month making this one. And it's um, like 60 little inflatable pillows that I tied together um, and floated out on the ocean in Ross Bay. And so, yeah, mattresses have been a big theme in my work for a while. Um, but because they're so bulky, I started, to, I started to try to come up with ways of making them without having to stuff them and have them take up a lot of space. Um, yeah, so that's the latest iteration of that. And there's a video of it as well, um, floating out in the water, which is quite nice. And coincidentally, I actually also put rocks in the mattress, so it didn't sink. Um, it managed to stay afloat. Might be a little bit dark, but there's, um, I think, 11 quilted pillows or mini futon mattresses is what I called them when I made them. Um, they all have flying geese pattern, which is was symbolic to me at the time, like cyclical knowledge and um, generational knowledge as well. So I kind of reimagined them for this piece with the water theme and the rocks. And um, I love how they're modular, so I can kind of change how they look each time for each show. And they go with the, the video of the air mattress as well. Um, the show is going to be on until the 29th of July. There's lots to see. Uh, fibers, painting, printmaking, and some video. So I hope you come see it.